Hello, I'm the Korean Movie Guy. I talk and discuss all things Korean cinema and today I will be covering Korean thrillers that I feel are hidden gems. Now what qualifies as a hidden gem? Well, movies that aren't specifically known to a general audience, ones people may not know about. Of course, when it comes to Korean thrillers, popular ones include Old Boy, Memories of Murder, I Saw the Devil, The Chaser and many more. So I guess this is a list for those who are seeking out lesser known but good Korean thrillers. There is a case that you will have heard of some of these movies, but these are 10 that I consider to be hidden gems. I do plan to uncover hidden gems across other genres, so subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on those and smash a like on this video if you find it helpful. Let's get into it. First up is Save the Green Planet from 2003. This is one of my favourite Korean movies of all time and if you are well versed with Korean cinema, you will definitely know about it. For me, this fits in the same bracket of those Korean thrillers that I previously mentioned, but I just don't think enough people know about it. It's a mix of genres, thriller, sci-fi, crime, comedy that follows byung who believes alien life forms from the planet Andromeda wander Earth and plan to destroy his beloved planet. He therefore abducts a businessman who he believes to be from the planet Andromeda and tortures him in his basement. Early on the film gives you a sense that Byungu is not all there in the head, he is a bit crazy but it does a really good job at convincing you that he might not be crazy after all. You will sympathise with him, you will sympathise with his prisoner and as a whole this film is completely bonkers. It was directed by Chang Chun Wan and stars Shin Ha Kyun and Baek Yun Shik. Why is it a hidden gem? Well, it's very difficult to find. It's not exactly available for streaming, it's only on a handful of platforms around the world which include countries such as the United States, Germany and, of course, South Korea. It is pretty rare, but the best way to watch it is on DVD. And in light of recent news, Save the Green Planet is now getting an American remake from director Yorgos Lanthimos of Poor Things, so hopefully more eyes land on the original because I would label this as a must-see from South Korea. Next is The Truth Beneath from 2016. This is one of my favourite Korean thrillers and one that completely caught me off guard the first time I watched it. For 15 days, a politician and his wife navigate a scandal after their daughter goes missing on the eve of the national elections. So the case of a missing girl, a mystery that unfolds smoothly, keeps you guessing, and a mystery that I don't think is completely obvious. But even if you think you know what's coming, there are elements to the reveal that provides a surprise. It stars Kim Ji Hook and Sonia Jin who gives an outstanding performance, the best of her career, it's truly special. It's directed by Lee Kyung Mi, only her second feature film, but more importantly, it is co-written by Park chan of Old Boy and The Handmaiden. The entire film oozes his presence, and I truly believe this is one of the best scripts he's ever worked on. Next, we have Alice in Earnestland from 2015, which was also a very nice surprise. It's a revenge thriller where a young woman struggles to pay the hospital bills of her vegetative husband. Despite her hard work, there's no hope for him to ever wake up until an opportunity arises. This was directed by Ahn Kuk Jin and stars Lee Chung Yun, who plays the role of Su Nam quite brilliantly. She finds herself in some complicated situations and how she comes to deal with them come at quite a shock. Lee Chung Yun in Alice in Earnest Land is her own lady vengeance and if we're looking deep down into the barrel of Korean thrillers that are hidden gems, this is certainly one of them. The Night Owl from 2022, so not that long ago, with the directorial debut of Ante Jin who won a number of awards last year for Best New Director. A mystery thriller, The Night Owl is set during the Chosun Dynasty and follows a blind acupuncturist played by Yu Jun Yul, who strangely is able to see normally at night and happens to witness the death of the Crown Prince. Now of course you do have to watch this with a little bit of disbelief when it comes to the blind acupuncturist being able to see at night, but to see a thriller set during this time period was quite refreshing. Like many films in this era, there's always someone trying to overthrow the king and it's no different here. But The Night Owl is well directed, it holds your attention and it kept me on the edge of my seat. As well as Yoo Jin Yeol, Yoo Hae Jin stars alongside him who's definitely more known for his comedic roles. And the role he plays here, he plays it really well. I do hope to see him in similar roles in the future because he could definitely pull it off. Tell Me Something from 1999 is a classic of the Korean new wave, a mystery thriller that's dark, gritty and has more than a few dismemberments. It follows Detective Cho, played by Han Suk Kyu, who is mourning his mother's recent death while under investigation for graft. On top of that, he is suddenly put in charge of a seemingly impenetrable mystery. Investigation leads to a young woman, played by Shim Eun Ah, where the victims are all her ex-boyfriends. So Han Suk Kyu and Shim Eun Ah starred in the romance film Christmas in August and reunited a year later in this very dark and at times disturbing thriller. It is a serial killer mystery with violence, blood on show and like I said before, dismemberments. Now being completely honest, I don't think time has done this film too much of a favour. It does seem a bit familiar to many mystery crime thrillers. But if you can cast your mindset back to 1999, you should definitely grow to appreciate this film a lot more. No Mercy is a mystery crime thriller from 2010 and we're back with more dismembered corpses. Forensic pathologist Kang is assigned to examine the dismembered corpse of a female murder victim. Detective Min points to a fanatic environmentalist Lee Sung Ho as a primary suspect. When Kang's daughter is kidnapped, a manipulative game begins between Kang and E, who hold secrets about the homicide case. 
Sol Kyung Goo plays the detective and Yoo Sung Bum plays the antagonist, two very reliable actors and they both do a really good job. It is a solid mystery thriller that are good moments of suspense and one thing is for certain with no mercy is that the ending is excellent, you will remember it and that's all I'm going to say about it. Doorlock from 2018 is a remake of a Spanish film called Sleep Tight from 2011 and this really wasn't on my radar until the day I watched it. Kyung Min lives alone in a one room apartment. One day she finds traces of a stranger breaking into her room and soon a mysterious murder case begins to unravel. This is another thriller on this list that really surprised me. It's suspenseful, mysterious, has high tension, it keeps you guessing and has a nasty moment or two. Now I did find Doorlock had a number of parallels with other low-key Korean thrillers from around the same time period but I do think Doorlock sits above the rest. The Chronicles of Evil from 2015 is a mystery thriller that stars Son Yeonju, Marlon Sok and Park So Jun, and this had me locked in early doors. It follows a detective who accidentally kills a man and disposes of the body to protect his career. The next day he sees that someone has hanged a corpse from a crane for all to see. He takes charge of the murder investigation to protect himself and find out who did it. There is a strong mystery to who is falling around with the detective and even if you can guess it, this film does a really good job of making you second your guess yourself because that's what it did to me. It has unpredictable moments and like I said, it keeps you guessing. Visually I think this film looks fantastic, it's very clean, the cast are superb and if you enjoy crime mystery thrillers, this one's perfect. Time Renegades from 2016 is a fantasy thriller romance from director Kwak Jae Young of My Sassy Girl and the Classics, so it's something very different from this director. Time Renegades is about a high school teacher in 1983 and a detective in 2015 who joined forces through their dreams to change the perilous fate of the woman they both love 30 years apart. Now I watched this very early in my Korean movie journey nearly 7 years ago now. I haven't rewatched it yet so my memory about it is a little bit hazy. But I do remember loving it, it hooked me in, I found it engaging and overall I think it was very satisfying. And if we're talking hidden gems, Time Renegades is certainly one of those. And lastly we have Azora the City of Madness from 2016. This is a political gangster thriller that's got an incredible cast of Chung Goo Sung who is really good in this, it's one of his best performances. Wang Chung Min is fantastic in this, he is very unlikable, he's despicable in fact and he plays a role really well. You've also got Kwak Do Won, Chu Ji Yun and Chung Man Shu. Detective Han, who for years has been secretly doing dirty work for the corrupt mayor Park, is now pressured by a ruthless prosecutor Kim to cooperate in an investigation against the mayor. Feeling trapped, Han persuades his young partner Moon to take over his work for the mayor, but things start to get tangled in unpredictable ways. As things are getting worse, only the evilest survive in this dog-eat-dog -dog world. Now there are some gnarly sequences in Azura, it's very violent and I think what happens with Detective Han early on keeps you on your toes. It's a gritty film but the highlight is certainly the ending, it is fantastic and one I enjoyed very much. And there we have it, 10 Korean thrillers that I consider to be hidden gems, ones I think deserve to be seen by many. Like I said I will be unearthing other films I consider to be hidden gems in other genres from South Korea so stay tuned for those and thank you for watching.